is the ghost with the most? Is it you, Gregory? Welcome back, my fellow gamers, to another FNAF Security Breach Theory video. Today, we'll be talking about everyone's favorite Security Breach character because, well, we all play as him, Gregory. Okay, so admittedly, Glamrock Freddy is my favorite character, and then probably Glamrock Chica, and then Vanny, then Gregory, but he ranks in the top at least because he is the protagonist, and that's just how that cookie crumbles. But speaking of cookies, can you eat them if you're a ghost? Perhaps not. Part of the reason why I was initially suspicious of Gregory being a ghost was his very mysterious origin. The Pizza Plex seems to have no records of him and is unable to locate his parents or even any trace of him in the system, implying he somehow, I guess, snuck in to the pizza plex, or perhaps he is a victim that never left. I know we get that ending where Gregory is sleeping in the streets, homeless, but don't worry. I'll be talking about that too, and how I think that could actually play into my theory of Gregory being a ghost and possibly a victim of villainous and murderous animatronics. But more on that later. Getting back to those cookies, let's talk about them. Can you eat cookies or drink drinks if you're dead? Well, I personally do not think you can. The drinks and food wouldn't be able to be processed by your ghostly form, so it really wouldn't make sense for you to be able to. We've all seen what happens when someone like Slimer from Ghostbuster eats food, it kind of just goes right through him and if anything it turns into like slime or ectoplasm, you can't really like process it properly. It's pretty gross. Now Gregory never seems to be compelled to eat so we don't know for sure, but it also seems odd that you would be collecting so many tasty and limited edition drinks and food items without being able to eat them, which in this game for some reason you just can't do that. It's especially weird actually because when you play in Help Wanted you can eat things and that's like a VR game, so I don't understand how that all works. And throughout the course of the evening, Gregory doesn't even express that he is hungry, and that is a long time and a lot of running around to do and not to be hungry from. If you're alive, that is. Which, like I said, I really think this is more evidence that Gregory may no longer be considered as such. Spirits don't really have a need to get hungry as they don't have proper bods, so they don't need to like fuel them. They're just ghosty ghosts that don't have physical forms, you know? Aside from not being able to eat, you also don't seem to feel much of any normal human pains. Gregory gets tired periodically from prolonged running and crawling in terms of his stamina bar, but he doesn't actually express getting tired in terms of like being sleepy. He's never like, oh my gosh, I'm like so tired. Okay, so like maybe when <laughs> Moondrop is coming around trying to make you sleepy, but I don't know, that's some weird stuff. <laughs> that's a thing that every time I talk about it, I'm like, I don't even know if this should be in this game. Considering how late Gregory is staying up for a normal human child, it's pretty odd that he doesn't ever express being like tired from staying up too late. Of course, if you're a robot, then the normal everyday pains experienced in human life wouldn't affect you. You don't need to sleep, so why would you get tired? Which, you know, he could also be an animatronic. Sure, we see him trying to sleep in an alley in one of the endings, but we don't actually hear him express feeling tired or ever see him fully asleep. So I'm thinking either animatronic or ghosty ghost. Take your pick. We're focusing on ghosts though in this theory, so let's get back to that. Right at the beginning of this game, I was pretty suspicious of Gregory when it came to him being a real living kid. Something was weird about him. He just, I don't know, there's something off about Gregory. I just look at him and I'm like, I don't know, what's up with you? Are you real? Are you a real boy? Right at the beginning, he generally just seemed to be too big to actually fit into Freddy's stomach cavity. Especially when you learn, at least initially, there was also a Faz watch dispenser in there somehow. I know these stomachs are in theory possibly based off of William's designs, which were about capturing kids, or at least seem to be from his sinister perspective. But in this game, even Glamrock Freddy seems to think Gregory moving around inside of him is dangerous, as that is an area that is really only meant to be large enough for moving things like birthday cakes and pinatas. I imagine even the pinatas would actually have to be really small though, because that cavity does not look big enough for a pinata to me. Also, I don't know about you, but I don't think I've ever seen a birthday cake for a kid's party that was large enough to be considered the size of a small child. Like, how big would that cake have to be for, for this to work? Like, he's have to be carrying around giant cakes in his stomach. Also, am I just not eating large enough cakes? Is that what is happening here? Am I missing out? Are people giving me tiny, tiny little like dinky cakes for my birthday? If that's the reality though, if I'm not just like getting tiny cakes and people are ripping me off on my birthday, I'm gonna be real sad. Even when I make cakes though, I don't make them that big. Let me know your thoughts about cake sizes down in the comments below. And let me know how big the biggest birthday cake you've ever seen or made in person was. Maybe there's something I'm missing out on here. Maybe I'm just not making or eating large enough cakes. Sweet, sweet, ginormous birthday cakes. Where are you? Another thing that seems odd is you never really wear 
the clothes that you collect. At least not as far as we can tell or see. Now they might increase your stats to just have them like in your inventory, but as far as we know, Gregory never puts those items on. Is this because he always has to remain in the outfit that he died in? Because you know, he's a freaking ghost? Perhaps the only clothes he can wear are the ones he's already wearing. And I know what you're thinking, okay, but then what about the Faz watch? Well the Faz watch could still be an item that Gregory could have equipped because it doesn't actually interfere with the ethereal clothes that he's already wearing. After all, the Faz watch is more of an accessory really than like an outfit choice. Also if my theory is right and he is a spooktacular spirit, it's also very likely that he's like a poltergeist who can interact with and hold objects in the real world. Like the flashlight, the laser blaster, his Faz watch and other such items that he is able to use. Though even then, you don't typically see poltergeists put on physical clothing for some reason. Ghosts might be able to change their appearance, but usually not by physically dressing up. Like a sheet. I think that's the most I've ever seen ghosts wear. I feel like in Beetlejuice, they wear sheets at one point, right? They're trying to scare everybody. But that's one piece. I feel like if you had to like have pants and like a shirt and shoes and socks and all that stuff, that's like a lot of clothing for you to have to like maintain a physical form to wear it. So I think it's just too much work for a ghost? I don't know. I would propose when it came to Gregory being a ghost at the pizza plex that he was a victim who went missing there. Perhaps that's why there are no records of him because Afton had them wiped clean. I imagine he would find a way to do that for all of his victims here so that he could preserve his hunting ground. It also seems odd that Gregory has no relatives to speak of. The game leads us to believe this is because Gregory is homeless and even possibly suggests that he or someone at least may have been living in the pizza plex prior to the events of security breach with hidden alcoves where it looks like someone has been kind of like squatting and living. And with one of the endings showing Gregory living in a gutter, huddling under a newspaper for warmth. Is it also possible that Gregory would always be cold if he was a ghost? So could his seeking warmth in that ending also be a hint that he's no longer of this world? That might be a bit of a stretch, but it's still something to consider at least. I mean, ghosts are usually very cold. That's, you know, they say when a ghost passes through you, you feel like a chill. So I'm just saying it could be a connection. I know I'm stretching, but just come with me on this ghostly journey. Please come with me. It'll be fun. Despite the fact that Security Breach seems to want us to think that Gregory is homeless, it's also possible that he simply can't remember his home. After all, for being homeless, he looks relatively well kept and well dressed. And who gave him that band-aid on his cheek? Or where did he get it from if he doesn't have literally anyone around to look after him? Did he run away from home? Or is it that Gregory no longer remembers his home because his life was taken from him during a visit to the pizza plex and now he basically haunts it? His soul trapped due to his unsolved murder and the traumatic nature of his death. Perhaps this experience was so traumatic that he doesn't even remember that he's dead, which is why he doesn't even try to communicate it to Freddy or even really reflect on it himself while alone. I think if he is a ghost, he doesn't really fully understand that himself. This could also imply why the real and true ending for this game has to be in defeating William Afton, aka Burn Trap. It could be that this is Gregory's unfinished business, and the ending we get if Vanny is redeemed with Vanessa, Freddy, and Gregory on the hill is actually symbolizing that they have all crossed over and now get to be together and at peace. After all, that whole like hill with the tree and everything, it definitely reminds me of the gravestones that we've seen before in FNAF, so to me it feels very like ghost vibes, in, in my opinion. Of course, one theory we've been discussing on Top 10 Gaming for a while since before the release of Security Breach is that Gregory could actually be Crying Child. If so, this also kind of fits with our ghost theory. I mean, sure, Crying Child could be an animatronic replacement child who was like created after the original Crying Child's death. Gregory could be a lifelike animatronic as such, but it's also possible that Gregory, if he is a ghost, is actually the spirit of Crying Child. Because although we have theories about where that spirit is, we've never really like fully gotten any confirmation on those theories, I don't think. They're still kind of theories. Perhaps that is why he is so closely tied to the Pizza Plex, which was also built on top of the Freddy's location we manage in FNAF 6, Pizzeria Simulator, where it's believed all the souls were gathered as part of Henry's plot to finally defeat Afton and then set all his victim souls free. And if you still aren't sure if Gregory is crying child or not, that's fine. I still say they have lots of similarities, but Gregory doesn't need to be crying child for him to also be a ghost. It just seems like another theoretical connection that supports the ghost theory that we're discussing here. Let us know your thoughts on this theory in the comments below. Do you support it? Do you have other evidence that you think makes it even more valid? Or do you very much think Gregory is just a normal, average child? 
who's homeless and somehow got into the pizza plex without a ticket or a parent or a guardian? Do you think he could be crying child? And if so, is he crying child alive, dead, or animatronic? Share your thoughts and theories down below. We love to hear them. This is Top 10 Gaming and I'm your host Amanda McKnight reminding you as always to keep on gaming on. Golden Faz Blaster goes pew pew!